free energy and the equilibrium constant K. Okay, so now we're going to finish up our discussion of free energy. And before we do that, we need to talk about the equilibrium constant and its relationship with delta G naught. Now, without deriving this, the relationship between the Gibbs free energy under standard conditions, delta G naught, is equal to the negative R, that's the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, times temperature multiplied by the natural log of the equilibrium constant. Now, if we want the equilibrium constant from a delta G value, let's say we calculated delta G naught, so we calculated the free energy under standard conditions, if we divide up by the gas constant times T and take E to the negative that quantity, then we're going to get the equilibrium constant K for that reaction. Now it's important to get a sense for the value of the equilibrium constant based on the sign of the free energy. So when the free energy is negative, so less than zero, then the value for the equilibrium constant is going to be greater than one. Now you can try that yourself on your calculator by putting in a negative delta G and solving for K. You can even do that with the equation on the previous slide. And that means that products are favored. So remember, equilibrium constant is products over reactants. If the products term is a little larger or a lot larger, then the equilibrium constant will be greater than one. Now, when delta G is positive, then the value for the equilibrium constant is going to be less than one. So that means reactants are favored. So now, so the equilibrium constant is products over reactants. If products is smaller than reactants, you're going to have a number that's less than one, and that means reactants are favored. So when you have delta G not equal to zero, the value for the equilibrium constant is one, and the reaction is at equilibrium. Now remember, anytime delta G is equal to zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Now, also remember that delta G naught means that we are running the reaction under standard conditions. And this isn't very realistic. And that means that we have one atmosphere of pressure for gases, all gases in the reaction, and one molar concentration for solutions. And the pressure on solids and liquids is one atmosphere. There's only one value for delta G naught. So if we get out the tabulated data and we calculate a delta G naught for a given reaction, there's only going to be one value for that reaction. And it also means that the reaction must go to completion. So it has to go all the way from reactants to products. Now, what happens if there's a mixture of reactants and products? So what happens if the reaction didn't go to completion? And this happens a lot. We've seen a lot of equilibrium problems and talked about a lot of systems where the reactants weren't fully transformed to products. As I mentioned, delta G naught is always going to have the same value for a particular reaction, and it's calculated using the tabulated data. The free energy without the naught, which is very important, that's the actual free energy of the reaction at its composition. So whatever composition it happens to be in. Now, what does this mean? And so we're going to look at a figure and talk about it and figure out the difference between delta G naught and delta G because it's extremely important. Okay, so here is Gibbs free energy. So this is G, free energy. And here's extent of reaction on the x-axis. All this means is that the reaction just starts here and then it goes, 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 goes until it's completely converted into products. So zero products, all products, okay? Now, the free energy changes as the reaction proceeds. So for instance, if we start with all reactants, then we are at the free energy of the reactants. And as we allow that composition to change, you can see that the free energy changes. And in this case, it's going down. 
So each one of these arrows is a delta G. Okay, so as we go from reactants to products, delta G is decreasing, minimizing, until we get to the point where we're at the minimum. This is the lowest energy composition for this system. So at this point, this is where the system is at equilibrium. And this is delta G at this composition. Now, where is delta G not? So here's the free energy of the reactants. Here's the free energy of the products. And if you take the difference, products minus reactants, then you get this quantity. So that's delta G naught. That's what you get from the table. So as we can see, as the reaction begins, start from reactants, the free energy is going down as the composition changes. And it continues to go down until it reaches this minimum. And this is where, if it were to continue to convert to products, the free energy would rise. So this point, this minimum, this is equilibrium. And this is the lowest free energy possible for the system. So delta G is minimized at equilibrium, but it has a different value for each composition. And there are an infinite number of values for the free energy depending on the composition. So basically the big takeaway here is that delta G naught says that we started with all reactants and we ended with all products under standard conditions and we get a certain free energy and that's under standard conditions. There's only one value for a particular reaction. We went all the way from reactants to products or the reaction went to completion. But that doesn't happen very often, it rarely actually. We usually end up with some intermediate composition. So here, even though we made it mostly to products before we reach the energy minimum, the free energy is minimized at this composition and the reaction is at equilibrium. Since delta G is the actual free energy of the reaction at a given composition, it's going to change over the course of the reaction. And the reaction will proceed in the forward direction as long as it's going downhill. Now we can calculate this change in free energy for non-standard conditions. That's what we call them, a composition other than all reactants going to all products we can calculate this delta G for any point in the reaction. So remember that delta G naught is equal to the negative of the gas constant in joules multiplied by temperature multiplied by the natural log of the equilibrium constant. Now, for non-standard conditions, we're gonna add a corrective term. So here's delta G naught from tabulated data, and we're gonna add on this term that takes into account the composition of the system. So our delta G without the naught, not standard conditions, is going to be delta G naught that we calculate from tabulated data plus essentially the same equation, but instead of the equilibrium constant, we are going to put in the reaction quotient Q. And so you remember that it's the same form as the equilibrium constant, but we can calculate Q at any time. So at any composition, Whatever composition you have, calculate Q, plug that into this equation, and you have the free energy for that composition. So we call that non-standard conditions. Now, delta G naught is for standard conditions only, and it always has the same value for a particular reaction. So again, this is really, really important. Delta G is the actual free energy at a given composition. So it's going to change over the course of the reaction, and you have to add that corrective term to the free energy to account for that different ratio of products and reactants.